Good morning. Get up! Kitchener's number one hit music station is 91.5 The Beat. Okay, let's do this. A new day rises. Pour orange juice in your cereal. Forget to charge your phone, brush your teeth with fungal cream, leave the house in slippers, and get in line at the drive-thru while realizing your wallet is on your dresser. Nice. Well, we can't fix any of that. But starting now, we'll help you laugh it off. Your day is about to get way better way because better. you're listening to the Scott and Cat Show. Well, Cat, it happened yesterday. Tis the season. We found the chief medical officer of health, Dr. Moore, came out with his holiday guidance for this year. Uh, okay. You know what I love about that? What? I didn't hear anything about it. Me either. <laughs> That's what I love about it is oh. that nobody probably cared. It, it was really interesting because you could tell he wanted to keep it muted. It was almost like, okay, I'm going to do this, but be cool. All right. Just shut up. Shut up. Because I have to. I, I think they that's what make it was. Me. Well, he came out and he said, yeah, there's a, a lot of flu going around right now. I don't that's think true. that's a surprise. Not, And that's normal. Yep, it certainly is. And he said there's a lot of COVID going around as well. And they asked him, well, are you going to implement any new public health measures? And he said, no. No, everything is good. We're just going to carry on. That? Yeah. Oh, all right. They, they were like calling for it. Uh, he also updated the vax numbers, too. And it's a little surprising. There was that big advertising campaign to get people to get their uh, booster shots. Only 13% of the people did it. 13%. When it comes to people 65 and older, less than 40%. And they figured that was going to be their big moneymaker. Those so, numbers changed through the years, <laughs> haven't they? It's amazing how much that went down, isn't it? Anyway, we'll tell you a little bit more during what you need to know. And one of the things that's on my radar is uh, naps. A, because I'd love one. But it's amazing how many young people are not just napping again, multiple naps a day. Multiple naps a day? How can they do that? I don't know, because, I mean, I thought I was the king of naps. No. People under 30 have got my butt kicked in that department, Cat. So we're going to talk about how many times you stop down for a little snooze during the day. Uh, Spoiler alert, some of them are on the job. That's coming up (laughs) right here this morning on the Scott and Cat Show. Let's have some fun. Taylor Swift now. This is Cruel Summer. Late for work? It's all good. You can blame it on us. Always a reason to listen just a little bit longer. This is the Scott and Cat Show. All right, let's talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. And Kat, I'm sure it is for you as well. Although you may be a little removed from it since you had children. Naps. Naps are Ah, great. Naps. Do you still get naps in ever or are you just too busy? You know, I'm one of those people like give me 20 minutes, give me 30 minutes. That's all I need. I don't like sleep in the middle of the day. I can't do that. Don't feel good. But give me like 20 minutes and I feel like a brand new woman. And you're okay to get up after 20 minutes. You yeah. don't feel like real groggy or anything? Get to, it, the, the key is between 20 and 30 minutes so you don't get into that REM sleep. That's what makes you feel groggy. So if you set an alarm for like 20 minutes, you're just basically fading out a little bit. You feel great. Oh, Strongly maybe I should recommend. try that. Strongly recommend it. I, I'm usually about a 60 to 75 minute nap kind of person. Yeah, see, so you're sleeping. That's not a nap. At that point, you're just like having a block of sleep, I think. That's what the grogginess, that's where the grogginess comes from. Hindsight, maybe I should try that at night. Oh, okay. All right. I'll tell my body. <laughs> I'll tell it. Uh, 12,000 people were asked about the naps they take and 25% say they do it a few times a week. That was the most common answer. They'll slide in a nap if they get a little bit of time. One nap a day was the second most common answer. One in five people take a nap every day. Wow. 6% multiple naps a day. That's a hard one for me to wrap my mind around because I don't understand why you would want or need a couple of naps a day. Unless they are those short ones that I spoke about. Maybe they're a couple 20 minuters. Ah, that's a good possibility. Well, here's the crazy part. I would have expected that the multiple naps a day crowd was mainly senior citizens. No, the top age group that naps multiple times a day is actually people in their 20s. 11% of people under 30 are napping multiple times a day. One in nine compared to one in 25 seniors. I do remember like in college and even late into high school feeling tired after school and feeling like I just need a quick, but usually it was like a quick nap. Were you a napper when you were like young like that? I used to wake up at sunrise and go to bed around 11 and felt great oh, all day. I used to stay up to like two o'clock in the morning. So I'd like sleep in 
the oh. afternoon because I had to stay up and be on MSN Messenger. Cat. Oh, Octavia, MSN Messenger is how we used to talk to each other. Yeah, back in my day. Before your fancy phone. We, before your text messages, we had MSN Messenger. There you go. And apparently you had to do it at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. That's... You had to. That was when your crush was on. Are you kidding me? You couldn't miss that opportunity. Right. Are you nuts? Right. They also asked people about the ideal length of a nap, and you're spot on here, Kat. 20 to 30 minutes was the number one answer. Up to, but no more than an hour, was the second most common, followed by two hours or more. Young people were the most likely, again, to say a two-plus hour nap is the way to go. So wait a second. People in their 20s are taking multiple naps a day that are more than two hours in length? When are they awake? Yeah. I think that they're probably up, like, all night. No? Do you think that if if we sat these people down and said, you know, if you could just find a way to go to bed by 10, 11 o'clock at night, you'd probably wake up around 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning and you'd feel great all day rather than staying up until 2 a.m. and taking three naps? I feel like it's a rite of passage, though, isn't it? Like, we all had weird sleeping patterns when we are younger and then you get a job and then you realize you have responsibility and then that's when you have some structure. But before then, if you don't need structure, you just don't care. Well, I'll tell you something. TV in the middle of the night used to be a heck of a lot better better than it is now. So if you're staying up till two in the morning, you've missed all the great infomercials and the party lines and all of it. You missed it all. Party lines. <laughs> <laughs> Do they still have those? I don't know. Probably. Call now. The party is on. They probably still make money off of some people. I'm sure they probably Certainly do. Certainly do. Probably the same people that used to do it, like back in the 90s, too. <laughs> still on the chat line. Uh, feel free to take a nap today if you want to, everybody. You certainly won't be alone. It's 543. We're Scott and Kat, and this is Sophie Simmons. Love turns lonely. Sure. Fine. That's how, fine. How are you? I'm <laughs> great, thanks. You? Good. Kat, do you ever uh, toy shop at Mastermind? I see they're dealing with some financial issues. Uh, you know, I saw that. Um, I did hear a while back that it wasn't looking so hot, so I wasn't surprised by the news yesterday. You know what I did like is they had the, the birthday club thing. I don't know if you know anything about what I'm talking about, you're so I'll gonna, explain. I need more info. They'll wrap, uh, if you're a part of their club, they'll wrap anything free for you. So when it came to going to birthday parties and stuff, I liked it there for that reason. Um, but I find they don't have a lot of sales. So wait, I you was, could walk in there last minute, grab a gift on the way to the they party, and everything. they'll wrap it. They wrap it all for you. You choose a wrapping paper and everything. So again, it was one of those things that was kind of a bonus. Well, I don't understand how this utopia is going out of business then. Well, they're not, but they've announced they're closing 18 of their 66 mm. stores, and they're going to sell the bulk of the business to Unity Acquisitions. That includes the majority of Mastermind Toy Store locations, but will allow for a significant number of the 800 employees to stay on with the business. They're closing nine Ontario stores. Yeah, it's too bad. Is this going to impact Christmas shopping? Like, do they have some hot thing that everybody's clamoring to get before the holidays or anything? No, in the nicest way. Like, look, I do a lot of toy shopping. (laughs) Really? Yeah. And I have in the last several years. Um, I don't find them to be good for sales. You know what I mean? Like, I don't go there for a deal where you got, like, Toys R Us actually has a lot of good deals all the time. So I don't know if they that was kind of what they were going for is that boutique way of delivering toys. It's like, you're going to get good stuff. It's good quality stuff, and it's name brand and all those things. They were smaller, though, and I think it's hard to compete. And then when you add in the fact that everything is getting more expensive, and then you have kids and you have to buy toys, you're going to obviously probably tend to go more toward the places that have the deals. Got That's it. That's where I see it. I see. And you're probably right too hey the holidays are around the corner can you believe that three weeks from today is boxing day christmas will be over three weeks from today yeah can you stop saying that I'm, I'm so- <laughs> there's still three weeks to enjoy my favorite season of the year all and, right and here's hoping everybody does i was just thinking from a practical yeah never mind i ruined the mood you do okay well, mood ruiner three weeks until <laughs> boxing day shopping well that's exciting i think are we all gonna be shopped out though i'm pretty like, I've sure shopped so much in the last little while i think i'm just gonna chill on boxing day i think the stores get it too like even they're probably like we don't need to stay open or, or yeah. open early on boxing day we're gonna yeah. be fine and the deals are mostly gonna be online i think for Boxing Day too. The way that it, the world has worked, it's I, I've been getting just as many good deals online as I have going physically into the store, but you never know. Let us know if you see something in particular. We always love a good deal. It's the Scott and Cat Show. Nine minutes before six o'clock. After six, I'm going to run down some of the different things that you could win at work today. Just maybe doing nothing at all. Maybe you're just trying to kill some time or you're waiting for somebody to fix your computer or get rid of that jam in the printer. 
those are the two things I'm doing right now. We still now. have that happening here, don't we? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't understand when one of them gets jammed up, the other one works for a while, it gets jammed up, and then mysteriously the first one is fine again. So maybe people are fixing it. I have no idea. Only but when they have to. It's a real pain <laughs> in the butt. Anyway, so we're going to run down some options on how you can win from the comfort of your own home or workplace coming up after sex. Six. Sex? Six. After what? After sex. <laughs> Scott and Cat is coming up. That's perfect. Happy Tuesday, Kitchener. Cloudy and one degree, and then overnight, quite cold. It's going to feel minus 13. Mix of sun and cloud, minus one for tomorrow. Chance of flurries, two degrees for Thursday. It's what you need to know. CBC and Radio Canada are eliminating 600 jobs as the CBC contends with a $125 million budget shortfall. They're each going to cut 250 jobs. The balance are going to come in the corporate divisions like technology and infrastructure. About 200 currently vacant positions are also going to be eliminated. Eliminated. With the job cuts, the CBC is going to be reducing its English and French programming budgets. There's even more layoffs in the media. Spotify axing 17% of its global workforce in the third round of layoffs this year. About 1,500 people are losing their jobs. The company says it's part of a strategic reorganization as they try and slash costs and focus on becoming profitable. Ontario's top doctor not planning on implementing any new public health measures right now. Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Kieran Moore says COVID and influenza are circulating in Ontario. They're going to peak over the holiday season. He'll continue with risk communication, but no new measures are planned over the holidays. Moore says just 13% of the eligible population has received the updated booster. Only 40% of people 65 and older got it. Rogers Communications has been ordered to produce records related to the Competition Bureau's probe into their infinite wireless phone plans. The Bureau is investigating claims in Rogers' marketing campaigns that the plans have unlimited data, despite allegations of a significant reduction in speed after a subscriber reaches a certain data cap. They want to determine if the marketing around those plans complies with the Competition Act's advertising provisions that bar false or misleading claims to promote a service. How about a little business news? Yesterday, Bitcoin soared past $41,000 for the first time in over a year and a half. That's a 150% rise so far this year for the world's largest cryptocurrency. Gas prices did not change overnight. The average today is $1.449. It's Tuesday, December the 5th. This is World Soil Day and International Ninja Day. On Monday Night Football, the Cincinnati Bengals picked up a 34-31 overtime win against Jacksonville to wrap up the week. The Leafs are off until Thursday when they face Ottawa. The Raptors are off until tomorrow when they play the Miami Heat. There is a couple of big ones in the OHL tonight. The Guelph Storm take on the Kitchener Rangers at the odd. The London London Knights welcome the Sarnia Sting to Budweiser Gardens. And that is what's happening for Tuesday. Come on! We, we are live. One, two, three! Woo! The Scott and Cat Show. We should play some bets today. That's what we should do. We should just do a little Scott and Cat Show. What do you think? Because Time Magazine is going to unveil the person of the year. Ah. Uh tomorrow. Okay. And they've uh, also given us the short list in case you have not heard. And uh, I'm going to run that down during what's trending, but we can have a little bit of fun with that. And you can tell us what you all think should be named person of the year, which doesn't necessarily have to be a single individual. That's the fun part. I have a ton of movie news for you. Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are teaming up again. I'll tell you more details because we finally found out more. Kim Kardashian is doing more things on camera, whether you like it or not. And my teenage self is squealing right now with news about who's pregnant. It's very exciting stuff. That's all coming up during What's Trending. So we're 30 minutes out from that. Coming up later on this morning, too, your chance to win Lotto Max tickets with Encore on the Scott and Cat Show. Good morning, friends. Well, Kat, how about a couple of contests that people can play at home, at work, or hopefully not in the car? These are all online contests. Okay. Give these a little mention. We do not recommend you play it in the car. Let's do it. As you know, we're on a couple of different stations, so I'm going to run down some options for you. If you're listening right now on Energy 95.3, Browns, Sports, and Cycle are celebrating 96 years in business, and they want to spread the joy, so we're giving away a pair of kids' bikes. 
kids' mm -hmm. bikes. That's amazing. All the details, energy953radio.ca. Now, if you're listening on 91.5 The Beat, a couple of different options for you. Number one, we've got an escape to the falls. You'll get an overnight accommodation at the Fairfield by Marriott Hotel, dinner at the Skylawn Tower Revolving Dining Room, and passes to Zipline the Falls if you win that. We've also got for you a chance to win an overnight stay at the Walper Hotel in Kitchener during the holidays. Cozy atmosphere in the heart of Kitchener. The Walper is the perfect place to spend the holidays. You can enter to win those on 915thebeat.com. I like it when people win stuff over the holidays. It's I like good. it when you tag us in your pictures. And it's free to try out for all these, these things. Some of them are on the radio. Some of them are online, but they're free. So that's always good, too. Yep. Cat, it's a time of year or a time in our, our history when we know there's a lot of crime, right? There's a lot of people doing stuff. Yeah. The people are desperate, and I get it. It's a sad situation, but what do we do about all these crimes? Well, a woman in Ohio who was convicted of assault because she threw a burrito bowl at a Chipotle employee has just been sentenced to a very unusual punishment by the judge. The judge of the municipal court sentenced Rosemary Hain after she was found guilty of whipping a burrito bowl at a staff member. She could pay a fine and serve 180 days in jail with a 90-day suspended sentence. Or she can go and work in that fast food restaurant. Yes. See, this is like a Judge Cat ruling. I like it. Let's mm -hmm. see how you do. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you could put yourself in someone else's shoes. Isn't that something that we kind of learn early on? But then I think some adults just tend to forget what it's like to kind of think of someone else and what they're going through. A hundred percent. The judge says this behavior is not acceptable, but offered her the opportunity to reduce her jail time by 60 days if she agreed to work 20 hours per week at a fast food restaurant for two months. She took the deal. Mm, she good. was initially arrested on September the 5th. Again, she whipped a burrito bowl at a staff member. This is a, a fast food rage incident. She was upset that she didn't get some sour cream or guac or something stupid yeah. like that. A bystander caught the entire thing on video. There is no way she was going to get out of this. She is going to work in fast food until she learns a lesson. And good. I think that's great. It lessens her jail time, too, which I think we all agree is good for everybody. There's certain industries I feel like it's so good for people to at least try to work in as, as a young person just to get a better understanding. I truly feel like being in a customer service role uh, as an adult has helped me appreciate those in a customer service role. I truly believe it. So if you have to send an adult in, send an adult in and make them see. <laughs> At one point, the woman tried to talk herself into a lighter sentence. She said, Judge, if I showed you how my food looked and how my food looked a week later from the same restaurant, it's disgusting. The judge said, well, I bet you won't be happy with the food in jail either then. But either way, this is your sentence. It's a little bit of jail time, a little bit of fast food work. I feel like justice was done, and, and I'm good with that. Yeah, very good. I'm happy with it, too. I like that judge. I think we should do more of that. It's 11 minutes after 6 o'clock. We're Scott and Kat. This is Tate McRae, greedy. Loud luxury to friends. BB Rexa, if only I. Scott and Kat show. Coming up during What's Trending, we'll talk a little bit more about the shortlist that came out yesterday for Time's Person of the Year, which they still call Person of the Year, even though it's not even necessarily going to be one single individual. But we'll go through that and we'll place our bets. Okay. Kat, the trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6 is finally out. Well, it leaked, I'm, and then they had to release it. I know, it. I, but come on, 2025. Mm -hmm. Come on, I man. Know, I know. Come on. 2025. They released a, full, a trailer more than a year in advance. Yeah, it could be a full two years before we even see it. It could be. Are you actually looking forward to it? Do you get excited about video games? Of, yes. I Grand Theft Auto is one of my favorite ones, and we were looking forward to getting this, and we were hoping it was going to be like spring. <laughs> 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 Apparently not. But, man, I mean, the obviously the graphics are insane and we heard it's more realistic than ever and we all know that that was going to be the case but i was pretty blown away by it i don't know if a lot of people necessarily play the game for the actual um adventures you know what i mean where you have to be in character and go do the missions and all the other things some people just like to run people over and i think that's okay too sometimes i'm in that boat i just feel <laughs> like running people over and causing some chaos and getting police on me it's fine but uh for those who are into the missions apparently they're like better than ever more detailed than ever i'm very graphic 
I'm reading about it now. They say it's the longest video game in the series, meaning it'll take you forever to get through it. It will, which is good because some people beat it in like record time because they just game all day and that's what they do. So I think that'll be good for those who want to get their money's worth because it's not going to be cheap either. No. In fact, that is part of the reason that this is making headlines. It's been rumored that this game is going to cost almost double what most video games cost. It'll come in at $150 minimum. Now, one of the things that is interesting about this is they say, I hate to admit it, but I might have given them this idea. They're basing pricing for video games now on hours of value in entertainment. Yes, yes. It's not about the cost of the game anymore. It's about how much enjoyment you get out of it. In other words, if you're willing to pay 18 bucks to go sit through a two and a half hour movie, it shouldn't be a problem to pay 150 for something that takes you a hundred hours of enjoyment. And can I agree? I, I tend to agree with that. I tend to fully agree with that. If it's going to take you a long time to do, and how much time did it take them to make it? I I fully back that. I agree. So they're not done yet, right? I mean, if they're not releasing until no. 2025, they've got a trailer and the game's not even finished. And price point wise, by the way, when you say they're saying it's about 150, it's good, probably going to end up being more than that because of the amount of time it's still going to take to complete it. And so inflation. Expect, so expect that. Mm-hmm. Plus mm-hmm. inflation. And we don't know what the world's going to look like in a hey. couple years from now either. 2025 seems know. so far away. It is far away. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think that that's probably good value. It just, it sucks. We're, for a while, their video games were 50. And then they crept up to like 70. And some of them were even around 80 or 90. Now we're almost going to double that. And, and one of the most lucrative industries on earth is going to be even more lucrative. Man, Rockstar Games gonna have a pretty good holiday i have a feeling in any case you've got to wait till 2025 for grand theft auto 6 and nobody's more pumped than cat so you do just sometimes flick it on and run people over sometimes it depends on my mood sometimes i'll try to do the mission and then when i get bored by it i'll do something else but i don't think this game's gonna get me anywhere close to bored it seems Keeps, impossible you know what i mean because i'm <clears throat> i was into the gta 5 quite a bit and before that we had the other ones too But I don't think that boredom will come up with this one. We'll tell you lots more about this one before it comes because it's likely going to smash sales records when it comes out. It's 619. We'll do What's Trending coming up next. More more of the Scott and Cat Show is right around the corner. (laughs) I don't see a lot of scenarios where Taylor Swift gets like bumped off the top spot for Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Do you? No, it's got to be Taylor Swift. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. People were talking about the Hollywood strikers. Yeah. China's president got brought up. The guy who who, who started chat GPT. Uh, Barbie was big for a bit. But I think that nothing can really, really define 2023 than Taylor Swift can. She was absolutely everywhere. We find out, by the way, tomorrow. We'll let you know once we know. Guys, my teenage self squealing right now. Shanti and Nelly are having a baby. Uh, In case you had no idea, 20 years after dating the first time around, these two got back together a while ago. As Weekly is reporting after an appearance at Make-A-Wish fundraiser over the weekend that had us all speculating that she might be pregnant, uh, they're saying it's true. It would be Ashanti's first and Nelly's third. Uh, Some movie news for you. So we learned last year Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are going to work together again. Very exciting. And now we know more. It's a new installment of the Oceans franchise. The two are going to play the parents of Danny Ocean. It's a prequel. So it'll involve the Ocean parents teaching their kids the fundamentals of orchestrating a heist and stealing from the rich. Yes, please. I will watch that one. Barbie, by the way, will first be seen without having to pay a rental fee or or ownership of it in any way, shape, or form for the first time. Coming up December 15th. So if you have Crave, that's where you're going to get it as part of your streaming package. Kim Kardashian has that new movie we told you about, The Fifth Wheel. It's going to start production in the new year on Netflix. And now this. She's going to star in her own series by American Horror Story creator Ryan Murphy. And she's going to play a divorce lawyer. She has a little bit of uh, experience when it comes to divorce and also lawyering. So I think that'll be a good mix for her. The contract is currently being negotiated, but we're hearing it'll end up on Disney Plus, where she has currently The Kardashian Show. Zac Efron is going to receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame coming up this month, December 11th. Zac's going to hear from his friends and colleagues, including Jeremy Allen White and Miles Teller will also be speaking at that. Should be good. We'll watch so you don't have to. Now tonight, The Late Show, once again, canceled. Stephen uh, Colbert continues to recover from that surgery after a ruptured appendix. 
not fun, I'd imagine, uh, into your later years, if you will. I don't imagine that's good at all. Finale of Dancing with the Stars is tonight, though. We'll see who wins. And the voice results are in. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, meantime, welcoming Julia Roberts. Not too shabby. Seth Meyers has Elizabeth Banks. Jimmy Kimmel welcomes the funny Bill Burr. Want to wish longtime listener Kevin a happy 46th birthday. Listening right now, and we appreciate it. Thanks, Ashley, for sending in the text. It's the Scott and Cat Show, and there's something new being offered in New York. Although, I feel like we've done this before for a promo. New York City, the Plaza Hotel is offering newlyweds this time around. An opportunity to experience Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, as part of their mm. newly married vibes. Okay. For those who don't know, it's in Midtown Manhattan. It's on Fifth Avenue. They've now introduced an immersive honeymoon experience where couples can actually get lost in New York, Kevin McAllister style. You get a range of activities designed to recreate some of the most memorable scenes from the movie, which was out in 1992. It's been that long since Home Alone lost in New York. Yeah. Holy cow. Did you cow. see Macaulay Culkin get a star the other day? I did. He looks very different. Uh, yes, they say he's not a child. <laughs> <laughs> they say if you choose the plaza for your honeymoon, you will start off with a scenic limo tour that makes stops at famous filming locations from the movie, including Rockefeller Center, Empire State Building, Central Park, Radio City Music Hall, and Carnegie Hall. Then you get to eat a hot cheese pizza during a tour around the city. You return to the hotel for an epic 16 scoop ice cream sundae with all the toppings delivered right to your bed. They say it's available all year round, but must be booked three days in advance. This is not a Christmas only promo. So if you're getting married anytime soon and you want to go to New York, you can do the Lost in New York experience. Cool. Now for a limo ride, one cheese pizza and a 16 scoop of ice cream 16 scoops of ice cream there I said it right that time you're going to pay a lot of money they say the price depends on the dates chosen but you can expect a significant add on if you choose to do this oh I imagine rates vary depending on room type even if you got the cheapest room there you could take the, the closet in the lobby this thing is still going to be pretty expensive. Am I crazy? Do you think those companies that do these tours and stuff, I think of the Sex and the City tour too, do you think that they make a lot of bank or do you think that it's like relatively like well, but they don't like do astronomical numbers? It's hard to say. I don't think they're going to sell a ton of these, but I think they're going to sell a decent amount of them. It's an interesting idea. Hey, you could go and lay on the beach in Punta Cana for your honeymoon. Sure, a lot of people do that. Maybe you'll go over to Europe. Sure, a lot of people do that. How many people have stayed at the Plaza Hotel in Manhattan and done the Home Alone experience? I don't know if many people have that story for their honeymoon, but it's kind of a neat idea. It's available if you want. They say it must be booked directly through the Plaza New York website if you want to get in on it. It's 25 to 7. Chilly out there. Today, 1, 2 degrees. Not great, but it's going to be dry. No snow in the forecast till at least Thursday, which is great news. We'll be right back. The After 9 Podcast with Scott and Kat. We hope you don't mind a few swears here and there. We hope you don't mind a few swears here and there. Download wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Scott, big warning coming down from Apple. If you use an Apple phone, you're being urged to get the latest version. Are you updated? Are you good to go? Yeah, it prompted me a couple of days ago okay. to download this new update. And, you know, sometimes I feel like it just installs updates and I don't even know it does it. This one was like, a we're installing this tonight when you go to sleep and it's yeah. not optional. You're taking it. Sometimes I find that's the best, though. Yeah, do that while I'm sleeping because I, I just want to wake up and have it done when it's available. Just do it. They're saying this one is extremely important for security issues. There were security issues with the last update. So you want to make sure if you haven't yet that you've installed the iOS 17.1.2. So you can go to your settings, go to general, and you can find right there the software update. If you haven't done it yet, they strongly urge you. They say there's issues specifically when you go to Safari. Yeah. We want to make sure that everybody stays safe there. So I would, if Apple says do it, I would say go do that. Especially because it's an Apple product in Safari that's the vulnerability. They say the second update also relates to a memory corruption vulnerability. 
I don't know what that means, but I have a feeling it involves hackers, and we don't want them no. in our phones at all. Imagine a stranger going through your phone. Oh, my God. No. No. No, Mama, no. No, <laughs> absolutely not. There should be a self-destruct button. Uh, here's a little more fun one for you. Sure. Oxford English Dictionary. You guys remember Oxford English Dictionary? They do their word of the year every year. And we're going to start to hear these. I think everybody knows. They're st- they've already started to come out. But Oxford has issued their word of the year as Riz. Riz. Riz, abbreviation for charisma. Riz is defined, if anyone's curious, as one's ability to attract another through style, charm, or attractiveness. He's got Riz. She's got Riz is one way that you could phrase that. I actually don't love their description of what Riz is because if Riz really is charisma, I wouldn't say that that's the best way to describe what charisma actually means. But either way, it's a weird choice. How did we get Riz here? And there was another one that came out a couple of weeks ago, another year-end list, and it was kind of off the mark, too. Are, are we out of good words? Riz isn't even Riz a full was, word. Riz was, uh, usage of Riz was up like 87% or something year over year. I think they also do it by the amount of people. And I think especially with like the younger demographic use that one a lot. So I was it makes sense. going to say, I've never had a conversation with an adult and heard the word Riz used. So I'm thinking mainly one that appeals to the younger generation. But yeah, whatever. Word of the year is always a high honor. So... Congratulations. Really? I mean, it's a word that already existed. It's just a nickname to the word, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's different. Fine. Whatever. So what if someone is charismatic? Like, what if you want to use it in a different tense? Same word. They're rismatic. <laughs> they got riz. They've got just, riz. They got riz. just they've got riz. Yeah. That's I, it. Should I start using that word more I, often? When I look at comments and stuff, I'll notice people saying things like, they've got riz or check out the riz on this one. Like, that's the way that they phrase it. That's the way it's being phrased. Should I incorporate this? Is, I, is this here for the if, long run? If you have to ask, I say just don't, leave it out. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to ask, should I do this? You don't really want to do it and it doesn't come naturally to you is what you're telling me. So the answer is no. Nobody needs to do it. But just so you know, that has been defined by Oxford as the word of the year. Okay. Um, Swifty, I heard, was another possibility that they had considered. And, and it's amazing that it took until this year for them to get that far. Yeah. Uh, prompt, an instruction given by AI was also another one. And situationship oh a situationship yeah that is a romantic or sexual relationship that's not to be considered formal or established so it's a friend with benefits isn't it uh but it's a situation that means sometimes something it doesn't mean it's good it's not necessarily toxic it just doesn't mean it's a healthy good choice a situationship oh i'm learning a lot here Once again, I refer to the dictionary. Okay, that's good. (laughs) Uh, Feel free to use Riz in any of your conversations. Beige flag, parasocial, and heat dome were also words that got considered by Oxford this year. It's nine minutes before 7 o'clock. Scott and Kat show. Feeling good. After 7, we're going to have some fun. We'll do a contest and give away 100 bucks worth of Lotto Max tickets. On Tuesdays, we do... Random trivia. Oh, thank God you remembered. I've been racking my brain <laughs> since about 5.30 trying to remember what the heck it is we do here on Tuesday. That is coming up right after what you need to know. Keep it right here. Yeah, I want, I want more. more of Scott and Cat is coming up. That's perfect. Continuing on with a mild week here in Kitchener. Cloudy and one degree is the high today. Cold overnight, though. Minus 13 is what it'll feel like. Minus one for tomorrow, but some sunshine. That'll be nice. And then chance of flurries, two degrees for Thursday, four for Friday. It's what you need to know. Big job cuts are coming at CBC and Radio Canada. They're eliminating 600 jobs as they contend with a $125 million budget pressure. About 250 jobs are going to be lost from each side. The balance of the layoffs are coming from the corporate divisions. CBC also says 200 currently vacant positions are going to be eliminated. Along with the job cuts, CBC is reducing its English and French programming budgets. More job cuts coming at Spotify for the third time this year. A round of layoffs. This time around, it's 17% of their global workforce being cut. About 1,500 people are losing their jobs. The company says it's part of a strategic reorganization. They're trying to slash costs while focusing on becoming profitable. Kitchener Mayor 
Barry Verbanovic has unveiled the draft of his budget for next year. It includes an almost 4% property tax increase and a tax increase to utilities just over 6%. Now, on the low end, that'll cost the average household about another $124 in taxes. Verbanovic says, well, it's lower than what some of the other cities are paying. The draft budget is overflowing with spending on various projects, including numerous green initiatives and even a newcomer strategy. A Cambridge man is facing multiple charges after causing property damage at the Cambridge Sports Hall of Fame. It happened over the noon hour on Friday, and it was intentional. He was arrested and charged with mischief and public nudity. No one was hurt. If you're looking to get a real Christmas tree as the centerpiece of your holiday decorations, you should probably make a decision fast, because demand is growing. The Christmas tree farmers of Ontario say they're seeing an uptick in younger families choosing real trees, which is why the demand is so high right now now and continues to grow. They say the trend began during the pandemic when fewer people were traveling during the winter months and choosing to go to their local farm to buy a tree. There are more than 420 Christmas tree farms in Ontario. Christmas is now 20 days away. Hanukkah begins on Thursday, and there are 26 days left in 2023. Tonight's Lotto Max jackpot is $20 million. Tomorrow's Lotto 649 Gold Ball, $46 million. It's Tuesday, December the 5th. On the calendar, it's International Ninja Day and World Soil Day. The Leafs are off until Thursday when they head to Ottawa to face the Senators. The Raptors are off until tomorrow when Kyle Lowry and the Miami Heat are in town. Last night on Monday Night Football, Cincinnati picked up a 34-31 overtime win against Jacksonville to wrap up Week 13. And there's a couple of big ones tonight in the OHL. The Guelph Storm are heading to Kitchener to face the Rangers at the odd. The Sarnia Sting will be on the visitors' bench in London against the Knights at Budweiser Gardens. That is what's going on today. From the top. Spark up your morning. Let's go! This is the world famous Scott and Cat. Apologies for some sound playing over top of Scott, but I promise you all the important things we will go over again for you right here on the Scott and Cat Show. We also have your chance to win Lotto Max tickets with Encore. We're going to play some random trivia, and I'll let you know that that's about five and a half minutes away. So at exactly 7.06 is your cue to call in if you're streaming us right now. Good luck. Rema, Selena Gomez, calm down. It's a Scott and Cat show. Happy Tuesday, friends. Let's get the game on. So, do you know a lot of random things but never get to put them to good use? Now is your chance. You better bring your A game. And let's face it, Scott and Cat will just probably let you in anyway. It's what they do. Why do we even have games? Why do we have rules? Yeah, it's a good question. We always ignore those in the meetings. Sounds um, like our boss. <laughs> Sound exactly like our boss. I think our boss wrote that script for that exact thing. Uh, okay, friends, this is your chance to win, and you have a good chance when you play with us. $100 in Lotto Max tickets with Encore is included here, and we're just going to test your random knowledge. You guys already know the number, though. Look at you go. one 915 show Hello, Scott and Cat Show. Hello. Hello. Who are you? I'm Kendra. Okay, Kendra, you ready for some random trivia? Uh, I mean, as ready as I'll ever be. Okay, okay yeah, cool. Great at trivia. All right. Well, tell us your situation. Are you at home, at work, in the car? What's going on here? I'm actually walking into work right now. Okay. All right. So we'll try and get this done quick for you so you can be an efficient okay, employee. Okay. I'm just like an hour early, so it's all good. You're an hour early for work? Make yeah, your... I worked out, and so then I just came to school. Oh, all right. Fantastic. Okay. You ready to go then? Yes. What brought Frosty the Snowman to life? Was it cold weather? His hat or a corn cob pipe? Um, a corn cob pipe. It's actually when he puts his hat on. That's when he gets. And they placed it on his head. He began to dance around. around. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Okay. All right. Well, like I could have done without the singing, guys, but thanks. Yeah, and it wasn't even very good either. Like nobody won <laughs> from this segment. Uh, okay, so next one rice, malt, and balsamic are all types of cider, vinegar, or olive oil? Vinegar. Which shoe did Cinderella lose? Was it the right shoe or the left shoe? Oh, my gosh. Um, Tough one, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with the right shoe. 
It was the left shoe she lost. That's okay. You've still got a few more questions to go here. You just need to get more right than wrong. How many reindeer does Santa have in total? Is it eight, nine, or ten reindeer? Um, I'm going to go with nine. Yeah, absolutely. There's nine reindeer, including Rudolph. What was the first country outside of North America to get a Starbucks? Was it Japan? Greece or Costa Rica? Um, Japan. It was Japan. Did you guess or did somebody tell you? Did you Google it real quick? Oh, no. I'm just trying to find my keys to my office. Oh, right. I forgot. You're at work an hour early. (laughs) Um, Okay. Next question, Kendra. You're doing great so far. What does your true love give to you on the sixth day of Christmas? Is it six swans of swimming? Six maids a milking or six geese a laying? Oh, um, six maids a milking sounds familiar. It's those laying geese. Oh, that's okay. You're still doing well. Which zodiac sign makes the least amount of insurance claims? Pisces, Scorpio, or Sagittarius? This is a random fact. You can take it to the day with you. So random. Yeah. Um, I have literally no idea. Uh, Sagittarius. Yes. It is Sagittarius, yes. yeah. The lowest number of insurance claims, Sagittarius. It's so random. Okay. Originally, Amazon only sold these. Was it shirts, appliances, or books? Oh. Um, when Amazon first launched. Yeah. Um, books? Are you guessing? Because you're doing really well. Yes, I'm totally guessing. All right. Well, we're we're going to give you one more here. A bikini bottom express bus and a pineapple house can be constructed from Lego. Those Lego sets are based on which cartoon? Dora the Explorer, Blue's Clues, or SpongeBob SquarePants? SpongeBob SquarePants. Just like that, my friend, you are a winner. We've got a hundred bucks worth of Lotto Max tickets for you. Tonight's jackpot happens to be twenty million dollars. Good luck, okay? Thank you very much. You're most day. welcome. It was great talking to you. This is Loud Luxury on the Scott and Cat Show. Get him back. Get him back is from Olivia Rodrigo. It is seven eighteen. Hey there. It's the Scott and Cat Show. Cat, I've come across a great post, and I want to share it with you and everybody listening right now. Things that you might hear in the bedroom that you might also hear while decorating the Christmas tree. Ready? <laughs> uh, things that you might he- do that. Say that again. Things you might hear in the bedroom uh-huh. that you might also hear uh, while decorating the Christmas uh, tree. Oh, okay, great. It's beautiful. I wish we could keep it up all year long. Ah. Please be gentle. Those are antiques. <laughs> oh no <laughs> Mood killer That does not go there Do I have to do it myself? <laughs> Why is it leaning so far to the left? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're going to need to put something under the skirt To keep the floor from getting wet Okay Yep 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 I got a couple. Should we put it by the couch or where we always do? (laughs) How about, look at that hang. Ah. The the ornaments, obviously. I think it needs a little fluffing. (laughs) That pricked me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm, I'm getting a little distracted by the text messages coming in. People are already on top of that. Uh, 1-833-915-SHOW if you would like to add to this conversation. It's shinier than I thought it would be. (laughs) 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 Kind of hurts my eyes. Um... Not all of them can be read here on the radio. No, Not all of them can be read on the radio. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) I can't do that one. You guys got to stop doing that. I can't do that one. I can't do that one. 
Where are the big balls from last year? Yes. <laughs> I forgot how big it is. These are things that you might hear in the bedroom and also while decorating the Christmas tree. How about this one? Hot cocoa would be nice right now. Oh, okay. Sure. Not another Star Wars thing. <laughs> <laughs> another one? <laughs> Maybe it would help if you stood on a stool. <laughs> Make sure you get some of those on the back. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> the, uh, some good Don't text forget here. about the backside. <laughs> good text here. Uh, Needs some trimming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, we uh. Just the way I like it, my angel on top. <laughs> Okay. Hold right. it like that just a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, okay, so we got it together. one 915 show if you'd like to contribute to this conversation. These are things that you might hear in the bedroom or while decorating the Christmas tree. Let us know. We'll have more of these coming up on the Scott and Cat Show. More, more of the Scott and Cat Show is right around the corner. Kitchener's number one hit music station. Stay locked in that sound. 91.5, The Beat. The Scott and Cat Show is powered by TonyJoeHall.com. Your home sold, guaranteed, or he'll buy it. Kitchener's number one hit music station. 91.5, The Beat. Yep, Christmas is just a few weeks away, and according to a new poll, 77% of people plan on using a fake tree. While the rest enjoy the tradition of buying a real tree and then forgetting to water it until it dies. <laughs> What's trending? Right here. Three, two, one, go! With Kat. Turn it, turn it up! Uh, I love this. I'm going to play this first because trending across Canada uh, beginning yesterday morning was a new Sick Kids promotion campaign. And Ryan Reynolds led the way, as he usually does. He's been a, a longtime ambassador uh, for Sick Kids. He enlisted the help of Toronto Maple Leaf star Austin Matthews and famous Leafs hater Michael Bublé, who were all involved this year. Kids, while a magical gift from heaven can kind of be f***s. But it's hard for kids to be f***s when they're sick. And that's why the work we do here at Sick Kids is so very important. Hey kids, it's NHL superstar Austin Matthews. Hey! <laughs> So rewarding. <laughs> you can check that out online now. Uh, Time Magazine unveiling the shortlist for their 2023 Person of the Year. Nine finalists in total. Let's mention a few, though, that I think are going to be at the top. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, and Taylor Swift. Uh, no, the Hollywood Strikers are also in there. China's president. Sam Altman, whose name you might not know in passing, but that's the guy behind ChatGPT, which a lot of people talked about this year. Barbie is also listed as a potential for them. And Putin as well. It's got to be Taylor Swift in my mind. I don't see any other way. It has to be. Absolutely. So. Taylor Swift was by far and away the most influential, interesting. Which one are we doing here? All encompassing. All like, encompassing. For me, it yeah. wasn't just about Taylor Swift's music. It was about Taylor Swift's tour. It was about Taylor Swift's new relationship. It's, it was about Taylor Swift's concert film being the number one concert film and like setting the bar uh, so high. I think it was all about Taylor Swift this year. I don't see a way around it. I really don't. Ashanti and Nelly are having a baby, in case you had no idea. They, they dated like 20 years ago, I feel like. And then they got back together more recently. And Us Weekly is reporting that after an appearance at a Make-A-Wish fundraiser, people were noticing and speculating she might be because, while well, she herself kind of made it seem like it's possible. Us Weekly claims it's true. It would be Ashanti's first and Nelly's third. I just love those two as a couple. In movie news, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are going to team up again. And we knew they were, and now we know a little bit more. It's an Ocean's Eleven franchise prequel. 
This is going to be uh, them playing the parents of Danny Ocean and teaching their kids how to steal. Meantime, Kim Kardashian has that new movie we told you about that'll eventually be on Netflix, The Fifth Wheel, and now she's got a series too. She gets, she's going to star in her own series by American Horror Story creator Ryan Murphy, who loved working with her. She's going to play a divorce lawyer in this one. Nicolas Cage, meantime, any Nicolas Cage fans? I love that guy. He wants to move from movies to television and says it was an episode of Breaking Bad that inspired him to pick up TV scripts to consider. He says, quote, I saw Brian Cranston stare at a suitcase for an hour on one episode of Breaking Bad. We don't have time to do that in feature film. Maybe television is the next step for me. On this day in history, it was 20 years ago today, The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise came out. It's a good movie. And Honey came out starring Jessica Alba. So they both turned 20 today. Then you got The Curious Case of Benjamin Button out on this day in 2008. Juno on this day in 2007. Beverly Hills Cop, if you want to go way back to 1984. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday from the Scott and Cat Show. You celebrate with Frankie Munoz and St. West, which is Kim and Kanye's son, who's eight. The source for all things trending, the Scott and Cat Show. Jonas Brothers with some Christmas sounds. It's the Scott and Cat Show. If you're just throwing the radio on, just for fun, doing something a little bit different, it's based on a thread online. Things you might hear in the bedroom that you might also hear while putting up the Christmas tree. <laughs> Going to start off with a great text that came in from Deanna. All I can say is you guys start my day with tears. I laugh so much. I seriously need to redo my makeup. Don't stop. And another one for the tree. Let's leave the lights on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for that text message. That's sweet. I hope we get this done faster than we did last year. <laughs> last year oh no let's anchor it so the cat doesn't knock it over oh no can you hold it while i push it in uh-huh 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 it's not as big as the last one i had <laughs> the balls don't go there <laughs> Ow, it poked me. <laughs> Don't break it. Wow, that's crooked. <laughs> Where should I put the pickle? <laughs> it's only been up for a few minutes and it's already leaking. <laughs> it's so sticky. <laughs> Ow, my hair got caught. <laughs> The text messages that have come in, even the ones we can't read, dynamite. Thank you, everybody. Very good. You can reach us anytime at 1-833. You crooked people, you. <laughs> you freaks. I kind of want to go over and watch some of these people decorate their tree. Me too. 1-833-915-SHOW to reach us anytime. We'll be right back. Keep it locked. Keep it locked. More of the Scott and Cat Show next. Well, hello there. Welcome. You can reach Scott and Cat anytime. Call or text 183 391 5 show. Let's go. This is the Scott and Cat Show. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, we're still getting text messages in, so we're going to read just a couple more. Simple, simple question. What's something you might hear in the bedroom that you would also hear while decorating your Christmas tree? <laughs> We had some good ones. Do you want to hear a few new ones? Give me a few more. Spread them out more. <laughs> Why is it so droopy? <laughs> is it supposed to smell like that? <laughs> That's a big gap, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It went up quick when we worked together. <laughs> Two uh, hands are better than one. <laughs> there are so many great ones here. Hopefully you got to hear the ones earlier. Uh, oh, my goodness. That's great. It's the Scott and Cat Show. If any more come in, 
We'll try and share them. If not, we're going to move on because we've got a lot of other stuff to do. But this was a lot of fun. So thank you to everybody who took the time to send in a text message. We certainly appreciate it. If you're on your way to work right now, I know not everybody is. People have different shifts, different hours. That's fine. But the next time you're at work, are you the kind of person who goes in and gives it 100%? Or are you the kind of person who just goes in and tries to get the job done? Get or do you even day. care if the job gets done? A lot right. of people don't. Right. Yeah, they're just really there to check a box. Like, I was here from 9 to 5, <laughs> now give me my money. Th- that's what some people are doing. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're the person who goes in and gives it 100% every time you get there, chill. You're doing way too much. Uh-oh. It's an oh, interesting no. opinion on why... Yeah, about 80, 85% is probably good enough when it comes to effort. And we'll tell you why that is coming up after 8. What you need to know, though, is next. Kitchener's number one hit music station, 91.5 The Beat. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to tell you the story about Chris and Marie. They were in a situation that maybe you yourself have been in or could be. They needed someplace cheaper, someplace a little closer to work. They were heading for Windsor. But the only way to make that work is they had to sell their property in Waterloo. And they wanted all this done pre-winter so that they could be in their new home for the holidays. Great realtor comes in. His name is Tony Johal. 13 days on the market. 23 showings, two offers, sold for 35000 over the asking price. And there's a good reason why. I mean, Tony Johal and his team don't just wing things. They have strategies. They have a great system in place. They have options, and they can connect you to the best qualified buyers to get your home sold and for top dollar. And listen, if you're scared, they get it. They're hearing it from everywhere. You, you might have missed the top dollar market. Are you worried? Don't forget, your next home may have also dropped in value, and Tony Johal has all the answers you need. Do yourself a favor and call the Tony Joe Hall real estate team or go to TonyJoeHall.com. Congratulations to Raquel of Cambridge, the winner of the Magnata Night Out. That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. You won. I can't believe it. Raquel and three of her friends are going to join me, LD, at Magnata Winery and Bistro on King Street in Kitchener. We'll get to try samples and get expert pairing advice as they guide us through their award-winning wines, craft ciders, and more. Over 180 options available for every budget. To plan your own Magnata Night Out, head over to Magnata.com. The more you listen, the more you win. On 91.5 The Beat. Happy Tuesday, Kitchener. Cloudy in one degree, and then overnight, quite cold. It's going to feel minus 13. Mix of sun and cloud, minus one for tomorrow. Chance of flurries, two degrees for Thursday. It's what you need to know. CBC and Radio Canada are eliminating 600 jobs as the CBC contends with a $125 million budget shortfall. They're each going to cut 250 jobs. The balance are going to come in the corporate divisions like technology and infrastructure. About 200 currently vacant positions are also going to be eliminated. Eliminated. With the job cuts, the CBC is going to be reducing its English and French programming budgets. There's even more layoffs in the media. Spotify axing 17% of its global workforce in the third round of layoffs this year. About 1,500 people are losing their jobs. The company says it's part of a strategic reorganization as they try and slash costs and focus on becoming profitable. Ontario's top doctor not planning on implementing any new public health measures right now. Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Kieran Moore says COVID and influenza are circulating in Ontario. They're going to peak over the holiday season. He'll continue with risk communication, but no new measures are planned over the holidays. Moore says just 13% of the eligible population has received the updated booster. Only 40% of people 65 and older got it. Rogers Communications has been ordered to produce records related to the Competition Bureau's probe into their infinite wireless phone plans. The Bureau is investigating claims in Rogers' marketing campaigns that the plans have unlimited data, despite allegations of a significant reduction in speed after a subscriber reaches a certain data cap. They want to determine if the marketing around those plans complies with the Competition Act's advertising provisions that bar false or misleading claims to promote a service. How about a little business news? Yesterday, Bitcoin soared past $41,000 for the first time in over a year and a half. That's a 150% rise so far this year for the world's largest cryptocurrency. 
Gas prices did not change overnight. The average today is $1.44.9. It's Tuesday, December the 5th. This is World Soil Day and International Ninja Day. On Monday Night Football, the Cincinnati Bengals picked up a 34-31 overtime win against Jacksonville to wrap up the week. The Leafs are off until Thursday when they face Ottawa. The Raptors are off until tomorrow when they play the Miami Heat. There is a couple of big ones in the OHL tonight. The Guelph Storm take on the Kitchener Rangers at the odd. The London Knights welcome the Sarnia Sting to Budweiser Gardens. And that is what's happening for Tuesday. We are very excited to be broadcasting to you live. Broadcasting to the world. This is amazing. I love you all. Thank you. Turn it up. This is the Scott and Cat Show. And it's also International Volunteer Day today. So we wanted to stop down and particularly thank all of the amazing volunteers out there to take your precious time to help a cause that means a lot to you, means a lot to everybody. So thank you so much if you are a volunteer in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, and I mean, it's not just causes, too. I mean, even mm-hmm. uh, sports for kids. I mean, those soccer associations and, and lacrosse associations don't run themselves, right? That's all volunteers that make that stuff work. People who are teachers that also volunteer to coach programs in the schools as well. Yep. That's a big one. Hey, the, Those extracurriculars? Uh, we really appreciate it. It means more than, uh, than you know probably in the moment. Uh, we are going to talk uh, about a couple of things. Time Magazine's shortlist for the person of the year is here. Great. I great. don't think we'll be surprised at who ends up making it. No. But you never know. They could throw us a curveball and it's going to be... China's president or something like that. They could, but it's not believable it's if not they choose happen. anybody else. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, we uh, likely play the person of the year a, a decent amount on this uh, station. So uh, there's your hint. I'm pretty sure you could figure it out. Can I mention one more thing that I didn't include in this edition of what you need to know yeah. that I think people should know is if you're thinking about going to any of the games tonight in the OHL. So London is hosting Sarnia. Mm-hmm. Kitchener is hosting Guelph. Both those games are teddy bear tosses tonight for Christmas. So bring a teddy bear with you, and I I believe it's after the first goal, but each team has different rules. So that's when you toss your teddy bear on the ice. But they collect all those up and distribute them out to people who might want them over the holidays. So teddy bear toss tonight if you're going to either of those games. It's always unreal to be there, by the way, and to see that. It is so cool. So thanks to all those who will be bringing teddy bears to the games. Don't forget, everybody. Or the vodka in your screwdriver. Screwdriver. Or just a straight-up shot of whiskey in the morning. Or all three. The Scott and Cat Show wakes you up. Lil Nas X on the Scott and Cat Show. Cat, I feel like there's people who some of them go into work every single day and they go in there ready to give 100%. And when they are done their day, they're exhausted. And they just go home and chill. There's others who go in and they're not as motivated to give 100%. And as it turns out, they're on to something. I'm reading a great article right now, and it's based on the 100 meter sprint, believe it or not, that says if you're given 100% at work, you're doing too much. If oh. you're giving 110%, That's ridiculous. Go ahead and pump the brakes and drop it down to about 85% effort. We're putting a number on it at 85%. I wonder how many people now, if you just asked, how much do you give at work out of, you know, 100%, how many would claim that they do 100%? Hmm. That's a good question. I'd be curious to know that myself. The idea is the 85% rule which is instead of giving max effort, loosen up a little and give about 85%. That keeps you more flexible and more present. It helps you be more creative and less stressed, and it helps prevent you from burning out. The rule comes from Olympic sprinter Carl Lewis. Remember him? Yeah. He said he'd generally start his races slower because he was giving 85%. He didn't crank things up to 100% and start passing the other runners until they had started to slow down and got too tense. Because they were doing 100 the whole time. I see, I see. So physically and mentally, this can be a thing. I feel like there's probably some truth to that. Do you know those people who do that 110 or 120 even? They seem so stressed out because they're taking on other people's stress and even like responsibilities and maybe even accountabilities. They feel like it's all on their shoulder. So they're giving 120% to try to make up for it. When really, this is suggesting let it go. Well, let's also keep in mind the rule that we all know that's never actually been published anywhere. The harder you work, the more work you earn. In other words, if you do a really good job, you'll get rewarded with more work, not less. And I think that's probably to pick up the slack from the people who aren't giving 100%. Isn't Mm. that the way it usually works? Yeah, I think so. So coaster down to about 85% 
and you'll actually make yourself a little happier, hmm. a little less stressed. All right. Hey, it's worth maybe trying for some people. Is it hard for some people to let that go, though? There I would some, find it hard to do. Uh, there are some people that are 100 that have always been 100. And to ask them to, like, just scale it back a little bit is tough. Unless they're like almost at retirement age, then I feel like that's probably much easier because you see the light at the end of the tunnel and you're yeah. like, eh, forget all you people. Your day <laughs> opens up every day checking your retirement calculator? Yeah, exactly. I have exactly. 310 more days of work <laughs> left. Oh, Those calculators are handy, by the way. For what it's worth, if you want to improve your physical and mental well-being at work, try dialing it back a little bit still do your job, eh, give about 85% and see how it goes. Because bottom line, I think that this all equals to your mental health matters too, right? 100%. I agree completely. Cat, yesterday, it came to a conclusion. They rescued that. They Actually, they didn't rescue it. I believe the word they used was apprehended. The kangaroo, mate. Another Australian accent that's not very good. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, they did catch it. One of the things we learned after we got some interviews done yesterday with Durham Regional Police is... It wasn't incident free. They discovered the kangaroo. Two uniformed officers, I believe they were with the canine unit, descended on the kangaroo. One of them grabbed it by the tail. The kangaroo uh -oh. got scared and punched a cop in the face. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It, it punched the cop. Kangaroos, they do that. They punch and they kick. Yeah. The feisty little fellas. Yep. It's funny because they didn't actually interview the cop who got punched. They interviewed his partner who was borderline laughing through all of it. Could you imagine? How do you explain when you get home from work? Oh my God, what happened to you? I got punched by a kangaroo on duty. I was trying to apprehend it. That's the last time I try to give 100% at work. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings it full circle. It's the Scott and Cat Show with Dua Lipa.